Hi, my name is Addy. I'm the president of Biotech Connection Los Angeles. And Biotech Connection LA is a nonprofit organization run by graduate students, postdocs, and biotech professionals around LA. Our mission is to inspire, educate, and connect emerging scientists and entrepreneurs around LA. And uh, we host various different networking events, career fairs, symposiums, summits each year all over the LA County. And we continue to host virtual events uh, during the pandemic. And uh, today in our informational interview series, we have um, Tom Allison, uh, our previous team member. Uh, so Tom, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. Um, so firstly, Adi, thanks a lot for uh, asking me to to do the informational interview. It's really great to come and do something for BCLA again. Um, but yeah, my name's Tom Allison. Um, I'm a field application scientist at Stem Cell Technologies. And so today we're just gonna kind of go through my career path, um, how I ended up where I am, I guess, and uh, hopefully answer some of your questions regarding the, the, the FAS um, position. Awesome. So uh, could you tell me a little bit about your career path and what really led you to the role that you're in today? Yeah, sure. So I guess it all started what seems like quite a long time ago now. Back in 2006, um, I got my bachelor's degree at the University of Liverpool in the UK in uh, genetics. Uh, the course was actually pretty good at the time. So Liverpool was looking to open um, a campus over in Suzhou, China. So I had the opportunity to, in my third year, go over and work for Beckman Coulter, which is an American company, but um, over in China. And so um, I did two years of study, then I spent a year in industry at Beckman Coulter, uh, and then I finished my studies for the fourth year after that. And during my final year uh, of bachelor's, I did, a, a, I did a project that was involved in, in stem cell biology. And that's kind of what led me to my next position, which is when I moved to um, the University of South Australia. Uh, and so my PI, who I was working for at the time, um, she was collaborating with this PI over in, in Australia, and so I went to his lab to carry on what I was doing essentially um, in my, my bachelor. So I did that for a year. Um, I realized I actually quite enjoyed uh, research. I was really interested in stem cell biology specifically, uh, and so I wanted to get my PhD. Um, so I moved back to the UK. Uh, I went to the University of Sheffield and started my, my graduate studies in 2010. Um, and during that time, I was also very fortunate because I got um, a case studentship, which meant that I could work with AstraZeneca. So they were interested in reproductive toxicology at the time uh, and using stem cells to address that. And so I did a six month period with AstraZeneca. Yeah. After my PhD, um, I then came to Los Angeles. Um, so that was back in 2015. Um, I carried on my interest in stem cell research, but I was kind of more interested in transitioning away from basic research into more translational science. And so this is why I took a position that was more neuroscience focused. Um, I did my postdoc for four years, um, but during that time I had the pleasure of joining BCLA. So I joined BCLA in 2018. And the reason that I really did this was because firstly, uh, my friend at the time, when we were in the pub, he was telling me all about it and it just sounded great. And the other reason is because I, I knew I didn't necessarily want to follow the academic route. And so I didn't know anything about industry or what was available. And so BCLA was a way for me to learn all about that and, and get exposure to that. Um, and I think just as importantly, um, there was a lot of skills that I learned at BCLA, which I wouldn't have got at the lab. So for example, in management and leadership, and probably the most important of all, if you're looking for positions is networking and, and how you talk to people and which people are good to talk to. So then I did my post up for four years um, and then I decided to move on. And in 2020, so about four months ago, um, I moved to stem cell technologies. So that was in the capacity of a, a field application scientist and that's where I am now. So, so yeah, that's kind of my elaborate path, I guess. So, as a field application scientist, what does a work uh, day look like for you? Yeah, it's actually, um, it's actually a good question because... Well, there's, before, uh, uh, in a regular life and in a pandemic life, what, what, <laughs> how, how does it look like for you? Yeah, in the pandemic life, it's actually completely the reverse to what you'd expect normally because field application scientists, you're essentially supposed to be a scientific expert to offer technical and scientific to support to customers but out in the field. So of course, 
in these times when we have the pandemic, we're not able to go out and meet people. So it's been a, a very strange time to be in FAS where we're in lockdown. But in normal circumstances, um, the, the job, um, I, I'm going to try and make it sound like there's some sort of structure, although at the end I'll tell you why there's perhaps not as much structure as we like to think. Um, but generally what, what the outline is, is um, because we're field based, we work from home. Um, so the home office days we, we like to have on Mondays and Fridays. And then through Tuesday and Thursday, um, we kind of dedicate to site visits. Um, so that's kind of going out and meeting customers, right? So on Monday, you know, typically we have a lot of meetings um, because we're a global company, we're all over North America. Um, we have meetings with East, the East Coast uh, and the West Coast. And so the time difference means that unfortunately on the West Coast, we have to get up early and do the meetings. I don't know how they decided that instead of making the East Coast stay up later, but it is what it is. Um, and then, so the next, the next portion of the day really is catching up with your territory. So by territory, I mean, it's the, the area of the country that you're responsible for. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest is kind of um, catching up with relevant people. So that would be predominantly the um, field sales representatives to see what their needs are, because ultimately the role of the FAS is to support them uh, as well as the customers. Um, and then Tuesday to Thursday, as I mentioned, um, these, these can be your, your site visits. So by that, I mean, you can go and meet new customers. Um, so this is to really understand people's projects, to understand what they want to achieve, to help plan experiments, or it could mean in-house training. So you would literally be in the hoods, right? And you'd be teaching them how to do things. You'd be uh, troubleshooting their problems if they've come across certain problems um, using the products that we sell. And then a big part of the site visits is presentations and really scientific education. And so a really big part of stem cell technologies is the scientific education. And so it's very, very science heavy. And so we spend a lot of our time going around to, to various labs, different departments, and not only teaching people about the products that we offer to try and support their research, but also just generally the latest research that people are doing, whether it's relevant to our products or not. Um, and so that's really a big part of what we do on, on site visits. And then Friday, um, you know, it's generally catching up with those site visits, getting back in touch with these people, making sure that they've achieved everything that they want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I guess organizing your next week. So, so again, you know, the territories can be quite large, especially in North America. Um, yeah. So giving yourself time to organize things like flights, hotels, travel is, is kind of nice to do on Friday. So you're all prepared for the week after. But the reason I say that's, that's the ideal situation is because quite often um, that doesn't happen at all. And so your schedule is really dependent on your customer's schedule, right? So if you say, okay, we'll, we'll meet Tuesday to Thursday, and then they contact you the week before and say, okay, I can't do that. Let's do Monday to Wednesday. Then you kind of have to redig everything that you've, that you've planned out. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the general sort of um, scheme of how we like to look uh, at the role. Yeah. So uh, amongst all of this, what is the most enjoyable or exciting part for you in the, on the job? Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, the reason that I was so interested in this position is because you get to be around the latest science all the time, right? You're meeting um, key opinion leaders in the field. You're meeting all the researchers, postdocs, grad students that are doing all that work. Uh, and for me, that's a really big part of, of why I wanted to be an FAS because I am a scientist. I've been a scientist for eight years. Um, I really wanted that to be part of my career. And I think, you know, a really rewarding part of it as well is, is that you can help or you can be part of a solution to help science move forward, right? And that, I think that's really rewarding and motivating saying for me as to why I, I wanted to be an FAS. And I can use my scientific background. Uh, and the beauty of it is that there's so much research going on. There's so much stuff happening. It's that you're always learning. You're always expanding your scientific base. And to me, that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so as an FAS, uh, you know, what do you think is, is a very important skill that someone should have for a job like yours? I think um, there's, there's, there's general skills that I think are very important that a lot of companies positions, no matter what they are, will look for. And then there's quite specific ones. And so, um, for, for being an FAS, I think you really need to be somewhat of an extrovert, right? So when you're going to meet customers, perhaps even for the first time, people 
tend not to be that forthcoming or they're not that comfortable with talking about their research for whatever reason that, that may be, even if they've come to you and asked for your help, right? Which is often the case. Um, so, so, you know, relationship building is a vital part of, of being successful in this, in this career path. And kind of linking in, into that, you've got to be quite good at assessing certain situations and certain people. So you have to be able to really identify who is this person and how should I talk to them? So an example would be if they're having issues with a protocol that they spend a long time establishing and they're, you know, it's their baby, right? Yeah. Uh, and you go in and you try and help them, you know, are they going to be really, really protective about it or are they going to be open to change? So you have to be able to assess how you talk to that person to get as much out of that situation as you can. And so that kind of leads into the interpersonal skills that that you need. And I think probably that's quite a general skill that a lot of a lot of companies are going to look for regardless of the position. Yeah, I, th I think you need to be organized. Um, again, this is quite a general one, but you need to be very organized. You meet a lot of customers, um, a lot of people all the time. And so you need proper documentation. Uh, you need to know who you've interacted with and what about. And this is kind of building towards credibility as you, as a, as a scientist, um, as a salesperson, as an FAS, whatever you're doing, right? If you go on a meeting uh, and then a month later you go back to that lab, and you can't remember anything about what you spoke to them about, that doesn't, that doesn't really give you a great deal of credibility. And so being organized allows you to really take advantage. Um, also, you know, you're working on teams. You need to be a responsible team member. Organization plays a lot into that. And ultimately, if you do move into uh, sales or in FAS positions, um, yeah. targets and goals um, happen on a quarterly basis, and you need to meet those. So that, that helps a lot. And, you know, similarly, prioritization and planning, I think, is it, that kind of ties into what I previously just said about organization. And, you know, they all work together to make you excel within within your chosen career path. Um, I think probably another specific one to be an FAS yeah. um, is you need to be fine with traveling. Now, depending upon your, your territory, mine's Southern California, so it's not too bad. Yeah. But if you're in the Midwest, for example, you, you'll be doing a lot of traveling. You'll be on a lot of planes, going to a lot of different places. But I mean, even if you're based in LA, uh, we know that LA traffic is horrendous. Um, yeah. LAX is pretty horrendous too. So you have to be fine with that whole, um, that, that whole traveling situation and staying in hotels and things like that. Um, yeah, and I guess finally, you, you just really need to be quite adaptable and quite flexible in how you approach um, situations. You know, the world's ever changing um, and you have to change, change with it accordingly. And, yeah. and so working on yourself as an individual is really important and, and being proactive, I think, to, to better yourself will really help you move forward in, in your chosen career path. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, amongst all of this work, what are the biggest challenges that you face uh, day to day? Yeah, I think um, probably the biggest challenges are that people can be quite cold towards you, right? And this kind of ties into what I mentioned before, even if they call upon you to help them, people can be quite closed off and, and cold towards you. And that kind of relates back to, to that extrovert thing that I mentioned before. Yeah. Um, so so you, to really to get around this, um, you need to have the confidence to be able to build relationships and, and to gain credibility. Um, to, to overcome these problems with, with how people may look at you or, or treat you. Um, and again, I, I kind of briefly mentioned this before, your schedule is your customer's schedule, right? So yes. you can set up a beautiful plan, everything's organized, it's all fantastic, uh, and then you get a call from your customer and say, oh, I can't do Tuesday, let's do Thursday. So, and then everything changes. And so that's why I mentioned that you really have to be able to adapt and be flexible when it comes to these things, because plans change all the time and it's, it's not, customer's fault right it's, it's just how it is and so so you have to be adaptable yeah so we talked a little bit about biggest challenges what are the biggest rewards for you in your position yeah i think i think the biggest reward is just helping people move forward right helping people move forward in the research you know this uh, if if you've been in the lab you know how difficult it is to get stuck with yeah. one part of a protocol and not move for a month right it's really frustrating and it's difficult and ultimately it slows you down from graduating, which is what graduate students are worried about. And for postdocs, it slows down your publications or, or whatever it is. Even biotech, if you're trying to translate something to the clinic, um, you need to move and you need to move fast. 
And so I think the biggest reward is really helping science move forward. Um, and ultimately, all the science that we do is to help people, uh, at least in the life sciences, uh, and to better society. And so being part of a solution is really the motivating factor as to why I do what I do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, so which brings me to you know, the final question. Where do you see yourself in you know, the next five to 10 years? Yeah, I mean, hopefully I see myself out in the field again in five to 10 years. <laughs> hopefully that's going to hopefully that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but but, you know, it, it depends on the company. So um, my company might be different to, to another company. Uh, certainly for, for example, um, field reps in sales, they will go on to do um, they'll become managers of territories. So if you're looking after L.A., then you, you might then go on to manage Southern California and then California more broadly. Yeah. For an FAS, it tends to lead to positions within product management. Um, so again, this this is potentially specific to my company, but but it, it could be um, other companies too. Um, ultimately, you know, I want to be in a more managerial role, um, so leading a team of people. And what I really want to do is to help develop um, business into new opportunities in in my field. So my field is probably for stem cell biology. Um, so really the idea of this is talking to researchers, understanding the products that they would need and the products that would help them, things that would make their lives a lot easier, yeah. and then going on and evaluating if these things are feasible, right? And, and a part of that is also going in and uncovering emerging markets, which regions or countries are pursuing work in that particular field, and then how can we support them uh, move their, their research forward? Yeah. So, so ultimately, I guess, um, you know, I want to take a more proactive role in finding out where the science is having problems and to develop strategies and products in order to solve those problems and, and support the scientists and support the science that's going on. Yeah. Awesome. And before we sign off, oh, what would you say about your experience with Biotech Connection? How was it working <laughs> for the organization? Uh, Biotech Connection is um, a fantastic idea. Um, it was born out of the need for this um, uh, networking between biotech and and academia. And, you know, there's so many talented people in Los Angeles um, and we've never taken advantage of it. And you can see how biotech has grown over the years, just how much of an impact it's having. Right. For me personally, you know, I kind of alluded to it before, but it's given me a lot more confidence in terms of networking it's given me more confidence in terms of my skills in in leadership and in organization um and ultimately it gives you that into biotech right i mean when you come from the lab you don't you likely don't know people in biotech you don't know who you need to know and i found that you don't even know what job positions are yeah. um i mean they they all have different descriptions and different titles and and so really understanding all this it takes a lot of time but you you can't you can do it on your own but biotech really accelerates that knowledge base and your your networking base to to give you that advantage when you move into industry yeah awesome that's so awesome to hear and thank you so much tom for participating in the informational interview pleasure thank you very much for having me